The main conversation around college football right now is not about the ACC's dominance. The ACC has been great. They won the ACC Big Ten Challenge this weekend, weekend, Joe. Yes, That's four, four, two. That is key. All right. We uh, laugh, but like these other conferences would have their Paul Feinbaum yes. carrying water yes. today about how great it was that Syracuse beat Purdue. Yeah. As if anyone here cares. But that's the difference between the ACC <laughs> right. and everybody else. Exactly. I think we all look at this and go, exactly. cool. Wake Forest beat Vanderbilt, you know. That means the ACC is definitively better than the SEC. I don't know. Maybe we should be the people do who know, do that. But do you the, know how stupid that is? Like in basketball, like when Duke or Carolina lose, that's what they actually do. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. These programs are now better than the ACC because, because they, beat, because these, they yeah. beat them in this one game in a one-off. So oh, Dave, okay. David Hale over to ESPN uh, put the ESPN stats and information packet out there for public consumption uh, to make a point about the ACC versus the SEC, okay? The ACC has a winning record against the SEC right now. I think they're four and two uh, in this season. But the SEC is five. Yeah, Virginia doesn't count. It, it, wait, Georgia Tech doesn't for the, count. For, for accounting purposes, no, we have to. No, no. Although I can't say accounting, shout out to Mark Packer and the West Durham. does it all the time. I don't want, I don't want to take their <laughs> bit of ACC accounting. Don't want to do that. So shout out to Packer and Durham for that. But the SEC is five and seven versus non-conference power five opponents thus, thus far. Um, that includes Alabama's shit show against South Florida. Yep. Okay. No. That, well, I mean, they won, but yes, it was uh, okay. It was terrible. Does that count as a win? I, I guess it technically counts as a win. But you're actually leading me to my point. <laughs> so the ACC right now is 500 against Power Five non-conference opponents, eight and eight. The Big Twelve is six and six. The Big Ten is five and eight. Conference USA is zero oh and six. And yes, the SEC is five and seven right now against non-conference opponents. My my working theory as to why we're here. We, we, we know why the ACC doesn't do this. It's just not built into the fabric sure. of ACC fandom. All right. It's just, that's not how it works. When you're a fan of an ACC school, you're a fan of that school. And not only that, you hate your rivals. Ding, 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 you ding, hate ding, ding. them. You do not want them to have success. But there's two other things that are going on right now that are actually taking all the air out of the room. Because if you wanted to shift the conversation to, well, wait, wait, hold up. When the SEC is running hot, everybody wants to tell you about how great they are. But now that they're not, and even in the wins, like you mentioned, Alabama or Georgia, by the way, versus South Carolina. What the hell was that about? People just kind of want a Jedi mind trick. Like these aren't the records you're looking for. This is not the football conversation we're looking for. But I have two theories as to why we're not having that conversation about the SEC and not because of the obvious one. The SEC does not want to have self-reflection. They only want to tell you the good stuff. They are the account Texas though, right? They are the equivalent of that person from high school that you kind of remember and you're you've been friends with them on facebook and all they ever post is like i'm out with my sweetie or everything is great when you know behind the scenes it's a complete shit show one is nick saban and the conversation about where is this going and how much longer are alabama fans gonna handle not having a legitimate quarterback it's the, the bill has finally come due for alabama at the quarterback position the same way the bill has come due for Dabo and the quarterback position at Clemson. And the two, as we were talking about before we hit record today, Joe, Clemson and Alabama are a little simpatico here and how yeah, they've been outclassed. They're both dead. I don't know if I'd go dead, but they've been outclassed over the last couple of years by the competition. For seven straight years, either Clemson or Alabama played for the national title. Clemson won two of them. Alabama won three of them. Mm -hmm. There was a run there where it was, it, and we were, we got used to it like we did LeBron versus the Warriors. Right. It was once we got to the playoffs, it's Clemson and Alabama. Who's going to win? We, we were so conditioned for that. Right. Well, last year was the first year that neither made the playoff this year. Again, neither is going to make the college football playoff. So we are confused because we've been conditioned for a decade to talk about Clemson and Alabama. Yeah. And the SEC for all, that decade, Paul Feinbaum had turned Clemson into his number one whipping post. Like, hey, I got to figure out a way to take this. <laughs> program down a peg yeah. because they've reached SEC status mm -hmm. in terms of interest, in terms of NFL talent, in terms of accomplishment, and even with their own Roy Williams. You know, Dabo won it, was a football player, a walk-on at Alabama, was part of their national championship team in the 90s. Like, he is the native son. They had been waiting to return to come home. Mm -hmm. I don't think so anymore. <laughs> they might try to get Kirby smart. Yeah, maybe. I don't know what they're going maybe. to do. Um, but those are the two programs that have driven all of the conversation nationally for the better part of a decade. And they're no longer part of the national conversation. So where do we go? Where do we turn our lonely eyes to? Well, Coach Prime and the, and the Colorado 
buffaloes. That gets us to the other reason why we're not having these conversations. First one is we're focused on Nick Saban and the dynasty and just how much longer he's got and whether it's actually... I don't actually, think anyone's focused on that. I think no, everyone's I think, moved on. No, I think people are wondering. I mean, based based on based on my reading Sunday morning and Sunday evening and all the national sites that I'll go visit and the college football people that I follow on social media, there's an honest conversation about like, okay, can Nick Saban put this back on track? Do they... Did he handle the quarterback situation right? Absolutely Alabama. not this and, week. And we know he didn't. Okay. Which now gets us to Coach Prime. That is the number Nick one reason. 71. He's won the thing all a million times. He's the greatest college coach of all time. But There's no doubt love, about any but, of this. But what do we love doing in national conversations? We did this with Coach K. We did it with Roy Williams locally. It's this rush to, well, I guess you got to call it a career. I don't know. Sometimes guys have different acts. Nick Saban, of all people, has had multiple acts yes. in college football. He's very Coach K-like in that Maybe he's got one more in him before you realize it's all wrapped up. But that's a conversation that will happen throughout the season. But the number one reason we're not having any sort of normal college football conversations, and I'm not saying this as a knock, it's actually refreshing, is because of Deion Sanders. Straight up. When's the last? Dude, that game was at 10 o'clock on Saturday night, Colorado, Colorado State. And the buildup was WWE-like between Norvell's comments, Jay Norvell's comments, you know, Dion buying the sunglasses for everybody. Well, he didn't buy them. He gave well, you know, them he gave them to everybody. He knocked out a deal with I forgot the name of the uh, the sunglass maker. You had Travis Hunter pregame talking trash back to Colorado State. There was a little head hunting that took yeah, place there, in that there's game. There's no too. place for that either, by the way. Absolutely not the head hunting. I don't yeah. mind the trash talk. No. But come on, man. Like that's the guy's also on the field like the whole game. You want to get him, square him up the right way. Not like that. That yeah. was trash. It was a complete trash play to take him out of the game. And I know Deion Sanders said that it could be a couple of weeks without Travis Hunter. But that was a 10 o'clock game on Saturday. And in no other universe am I hype about a Colorado, Colorado State no. game. No universe out there. There's no alternate MCU planet 325 that I'm going, I'm sitting down and staying awake at 10 o'clock for a Colorado, Colorado State game. But here am I going, all right. What time okay, can I stay awake? Do I need to make some coffee? I fell asleep, so I missed, you know, I missed the ending in real time. But dude, I have I cannot Dion's got his faults, and there are some honest conversations about the future of Dion. But right now, there is no better show in sports than what's going on with Deion Sanders. Deion Sanders is one of the three best athletes of the last 130 years. Sure. Deion Sanders is richer than I'll ever be. He's better looking than I'll ever be. He is smarter than I'll ever be. Yeah. However, finally this weekend, it dawned on me. There is something that Deion Sanders and I have in common. And that is, we just wanted to coach our kids. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I loved coaching my kids in basketball. That was, that was the thing I loved more than anything was coaching those teams mm -hmm. and, and wanting to win in those games. And here is a guy, he just wants to coach his kids. And I think you'll see him coach in the NFL with his kids. I think you're going to see that because why does he want to sit and run this thing around every conversation he has every post game. And he had his mom at this post game, but every conversation is about like, Hey, I've been doing this for a long time. You guys just don't know. Mm -hmm. He says it after every game and his son Shiloh had a pick six and, and was really holding that thing down before Shador got it going. Mm -hmm. And he says it after every game, his pure enjoyment, for him, because you got to remember, how many times have we seen superstar athletes try to coach and fail all the time? I'm not talking about like, I'm not talking about Frank Reich here. No, no, no. I'm talking no, no, about no. Larry Bird. I'm talking about Magic Johnson. Right. I'm talking about why Michael Jordan never coached. When you have that much talent, it's almost impossible for you to go and coach somebody because they can't do all of the unbelievable things that you did. Mm -hmm. And it frustrates you to the, the ends of the earth. Why can't you do it how I did? <laughs> this is what I need you to do. Mm -hmm. But think about, you know, think about Kobe Bryant in his second act with his daughter mm -hmm. and the way that he really redeemed himself. That was coaching his daughter's basketball team. You look at Deion Sanders now. He has been coaching his sons, as he's told us, since they were five and six years old. So all he's done is translate that to first. Jackson State, because they were the ones that gave him a chance. Yeah. And now he's at Colorado because they gave him a chance. And I promise you, there'll be an NFL team that gives him a chance. And I, th I think his, I think, I think Shador is that good. And I think he has a real chance. 
I think he's just trying to enjoy it too. Oh, you know, he it, does it in a Dion way. He does it in a very Brings, Dion way. You know, Lil gonna... Wayne out. He had Dwayne the Rock well, Johnson it's there. Funny. It's funny. He you had his that. mom there. It's funny. He's you got that. swag on swag right now. So here's but the... you got to keep in mind too. Dion's older than us. Nobody can. Nobody but Dion's can... not a kid. He's not a kid, <laughs> and not everybody can pull that off. No, there's of a course cl- not. There's a clear difference. Okay. There's prime time, and then there's everybody else. You mentioned the post game. And Dion's fifty six. Here's Dion Sanders with the Rock and his mom. Like, what is the most twenty twenty three sentence that I can come up with? Deion Sanders just coached his team and his son to another win. They're undefeated so far Sons. this season. Yeah. Sons, I should say. And in the after in the in the post game, he's got the rock at his mom. We, we, what planet are we on? Right little Wayne bringing him out. It's, it was perfect. <laughs> Here's the exchange. You know, a lot. Unless they talking about y'all, or they talking about my mom. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh. See back where I come from, when somebody says something about your mom, you put one foot back. You were ready to get down. He didn't directly say something about my mom, but he alluded to the fact that his mama raised him, and my mama didn't raise me right now. I raised him right. You can't replicate that. So many coaches try right. to replicate this. And I don't think he'll try once Shador is gone either. That's what I'm saying. Yes. Like, ride this thing, use it. But I genuinely think at the heart of all of this, his biggest motivation, his primary motivation has been to coach his game. Mm-hmm. I say try. Dion's not trying. Dion's just being Dion. There, there's a distinction. No, there. I think there's more to it than that. I think well, there's, no. uh, now, part of it too is when you're the coach, hey, you have to. You have different jobs as a coach. Of course. Right? Your number one job as a coach is to make sure everyone on the team, coaches, assistant coaches included, know mm-hmm. their role. That yeah. is your number one job. Which he's as done a, coach. a good job with letting his assistants do his and thing. And then the number two part of that job is to realize, well, what can I do? What can I do? Yeah. And when you turn things over and you have smart people around you, I, I told you this when he was at Jackson State. He didn't get enough credit at Jackson State because that wasn't a good team mm-hmm. that he went into and started winning football games at. That wasn't a good program. Okay. So he never got enough credit for what he did at Jackson State. And now at Colorado, you're talking about a 1-11 team. They're now 3-0. and I do expect the next two weeks to be very difficult, particularly without Hunter. Yeah. Like, it, it's going to be tougher it's for gonna, them. It's going to ramp up. And, but I got news right for, now. But I got news for you. Colorado State's not good. That, and, he, and he helped them a little bit there's, with some of the nonsense this week. Yes. There's, there's so, the other angle to that. They gave up a whole ton of points to a Colorado State sure. team that is not good. We've talked we talked about this the last couple of weeks and that it's a, kind of a tiny team that might be able to get pushed around when they go up against a tougher opponent. I'm not going to fault them for their start. They've taken full advantage of what's oh, been presented to them. But they've done it. It's not just because they have better talent than the other teams what I'm getting at. You look at the two-point plays that they ran yeah. at the end of this game. That's good coaching. Yeah. You know, some of that is Shador Sanders making an exceptional play. Other part of it is you you got to scheme guys open. And I've been screaming about that for however long. That's what Colorado does. 